Oh my goodness. I am so excited for this episode. Actually, I'm excited for this time of year, to be honest. It's the um, it's summer here in Australia. It's December, the time that I'm recording this episode. And I absolutely love this time of year for a number of reasons. I love it because it's summer and summer is my favourite, favourite time of the year and closely followed by spring. I just love the warmth. I love the sunshine. Um, But for me, primarily, it's the warmth and the energy and it really... um, it's kind of like a generator for my soul. Um, my, I feel like I come alive in summer. Um, I wouldn't do very well living um, anywhere where it is lots of cold gloominess. That would, you know, the seasonal affected disorder, the the sad, that's a real thing. And I suffer from that. So I love, um, I just love this time of year. So summer warmth. And I really love it too. December, and I know that this isn't true for everybody, that they're kind of calendar, I don't know if calendar, but their energy year kicks off at different times. For some people, they wind the year up midway through the year. I'm definitely work on the the calendar year. And for me, December, January are a real time for reflecting, for renewal, for looking at the year that was and bringing it to a beautiful close and then thinking about what I want for the coming year. And I, it's quite a sacred time of ritual for me. This is very much a a time of ritual, bringing, um, reflecting on the current year or the year that's been and then setting my intentions for the year ahead. And this is in relation to all parts of my life. This is in relation to what I'm doing in business, absolutely, because that's a big chunk of my life. But it's also to do with all the areas of my life. So who I am, who I want to be, my health, my wellness, my family, my friends, the things that I do to fill my cup, what I do to give back to other people and the world around me, the fun stuff that I do, Um, also my spirituality, um, my finances. So there's, it's almost like the, the different tools that make up the well of my life I reflect on my whole life. And if anybody wants to get a copy of my happiness checker, it's a free resource that um, you can download. I'll pop the link in the um, the show notes for you that they've got the, the different pools of life that I use. You can absolutely come up with your own. Um, and that, that the happiness checker is about just doing a bit of a stock take as to what what pools um, might need topping up, what ones are overflowing. And I I don't ever believe that we have all areas of our life. um, There's different stages where we need to kind of top up different pools of our life. So anyway, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the process that I go through at the end of the year in bringing the year to a, a nice close, the kind of the ritual that I go through. And then in one of the future podcasts, I'll go through what I do to set my intentions for the new year. I won't do it all in this one. Um, and, and I've been going through this process, I guess, 
for a while, for, for quite a number of years, and I've um, taken the process that I've used and I've popped it into a um, a process that others can use as well. And I call it the New Year Fabulous Next Level You. So for me, it's about really gearing up for the new year, but it's a two-part process. It's reflecting on, um, as I said, the year that has been um, and what what I want to continue with into the new year and what I want to release and let go of from this year. So um, it's had a little bit of a makeover in the, the last few years, but I've got it as a, a playbook that you can use and you can purchase. It's only $27 Aussie dollars. And um, I'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. But when I was looking this morning, um, so the process I go through in, to be really, really honest with you, is in January. So even though I said that I love this time of the year, I'm mentally gearing up for reviewing the year, but I take January off work and I always spend time at the beach. Yep, always. I think there hasn't been... I don't know if there's been a year in my life that I haven't spent some time at the beach. So summer holidays here in Australia. Um, So I do the process over, um, uh, the word's just gone out of my head. It's a gradual process that I go through. And I sit down and I reflect on the current year and I think about things that have happened. And I'll go through the, the the prompts that I've come up with and you can add your own. Absolutely. You know me, you do you. Um, this is just a process that works for me. And if it can help you, um, happy days. So I spend time just really reflecting and I carve that time out for me. I The family knows that that's my time. It's not where... Um, that's my solo sacred time to really, really reflect on the year. And I reflect pretty deeply about um, about the year <laughs> and not in the same sitting, but in one of the, the beach days, um, I will then think about, well, what do I want for the year ahead? Now, I've already been thinking about that, absolutely, but I like to have it into one place and really go into what are the things that I really, really want to achieve. So anyway, um, I, I just wanted to read from the the little front of the the playbook I love how because when I'm writing things it's it's downloaded in the moment and I've written this quite some time ago but the opening is about follow your dreams channel your inner strength and magnificence to take the leap of faith needed to make your dreams come true allow yourself to pursue what brings you joy and fulfillment as you embark on this journey of creating your most beautiful life May you become closer than ever before to understanding who you are, what matters most to you, and how best to achieve it. It takes dedication and determination to stay focused on your goals and be resilient in the face of setbacks, but it can lead to amazing things. When you take risks and chase after what you want, you gain valuable experiences that help you be the person you want to be and live the life that you want to live. Having a vision for your life gives you purpose and helps create meaning, no matter how small or large your dreams may be. With each step forward, you build strength and resilience while growing into something bigger than yourself. Have faith, stay focused, and keep striving towards your dreams. You never know what amazing things may be um, may await you on the other side. Now, listening to myself, <laughs> I'm all about having dreams and aspirations and goals and intentions. I have a melting pot of all of those things, but I also, when I'm putting that out to the universe, I ask for this or something better to come my way. And quite often, it will be things that I least expect um, that come into my life, which are very, very, very cool. So I really have one simple mission, um, is to help you create a life that you're excited to jump out of bed every day to live. 
I'm really, from the bottom of my heart, passionate about inspiring people who want more from life to allow themselves to dream big and believe what's possible and then to help them make that happen, whatever that is for them. And I show them the exact steps to creating a wildly happy and successful life in all areas of life, like a whole of life. And I use my happiness for life framework and my signature happiness and success transformation programs to help you reconnect with who you are, to wholeheartedly believe in yourself. I think that's one of the the big things I find is to help people to wholeheartedly believe, like to open up their imaginations and to wholeheartedly believe in themselves and what's possible. I also help people to find their passion and their purpose and build amazing, authentic lives to really step into that exhilarating freedom of just being undeniably who they are, truly happy and living the life of their their dreams. Um, I help people to make peace with the past, to live in the present and to create a future that they're just so excited about. And you know me, well, hopefully you know me or you're learning to know me. I'm I'm the queen of transformation. I'm absolutely about growth and transformation and sparking those transformations. But I'm the princess of practicality as well. I when um, I don't do things to overcomplicate stuff. I do things to make life easier. So taking practical, easy to implement steps for the transformation, whatever your transformation is, whether it's big or small, um, just to help you make that transformation happen. So really what I do is help you to supercharge your life, taking it from that ho-hum to let's have fun. And part of my process is for me to be able to help you is for me to be the best version that I can possibly be. And if you've listened to any of my previous episodes about my story, um, I made that decision that I was going to be the best version of me and live my best and most beautiful life. And I have honoured that commitment. And I can honestly say, hand on heart, that I am living my best life. doesn't mean that everything's roses and unicorns every day, but I've got the skills, the toolkit, my little pink playbook of life toolkit of all my happiness and hacks. to be able to get out of those times when I'm not feeling great and to get back on track with feeling amazing. And this ritual, end of year ritual, is a huge, huge part of that. So I'm going to dip into it. And if anybody's um, watching on YouTube, you can watch the video on YouTube, which is me sitting in my summer sundress, um, coming to you but I've got a copy of and I bind like when you oh sorry it's a bit shiny oh sparkly sparkly um when you purchase it you get the an instant download and you can print that out I always bind mine um because I like to have the um hard copy of it so it's, it's designed um for you to to print out and it goes through different prompts for you. It's very, very practical and it's about you using it how you want to use it. That some people will follow this from start to finish and follow it exactly. Um, I I don't do that. I I do it from, um, I do all of it, but I um, do all the reflective stuff first and I tend to, um, go deep with some of the questions, then come back and revisit them. Um, you know, I, I kind of follow the process, but just how I feel and what the beach days are. Sometimes it's a bit glary to look at the book on the beach. So I um, go back to the holiday accommodation and do it there. So anyway, um, so it's got all the prompts for you. 
and it's divided into two parts. It's got the first part is reflection on the current year. The second part is about bringing in the new year. And I'll go through that in another um, in another podcast episode. So what I do um, is it's for all areas of your life and you can use the same questions for your business if you want to use it for your business as well. There's some slightly different ones, but you can adjust them for your business. I used to have a separate um, playbook for business, but I just found that um, people can adapt the one that they've got. So what I do first of all is just overall, how would I describe the past year? How would I describe it? Now, I haven't done this process for 2023. I'm doing this, listen to this, Um, our family's going to Bali in January. Um, I'm going to be doing it there in Bali. Remember I said beach in January? Um, I'm hanging out big time at the beach and doing a whole lot of reflection, reset. Oh, my God, so excited, so excited. So I haven't gone through, I'm going to go through the prompts with you now, but I haven't answered my prompts. Um, There'll be some things that will pop into my head as I go through this. So overall, how would I describe this past year? And I'm looking back at my 2022 reflection and I describe 2022 as heavy. And, you know, what am I going to remember most about that year? There was lots of loss. There was lots of grief um, in 2022. There was, um, there was, still residual from my dad passing away. John's mum passed away. We had other family loss as well. Um, so the year was heavy. It was That's when I had my Jenga tower. Oh, no, that was the beginning of this year. Oh, my God. That'll go on to my reflection. Um, that was a big part. And there was a big transition from that as well. So that was the residual from last year. So when I was thinking about overall, how would I describe 2023? For me, it was recalibrating. I really felt that this last year was about recalibrating from probably the last maybe four years of heaviness and grief and trauma in our family. So 2023 was a real turning point and it was that recalibrating. So as I reflect on, I probably should take notes um, as I do this. (laughs) But it was, uh, um, it's been a re- recalibrating is the word that comes for me. So then I go through and I think, well, what did the 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 previous year? What did it allow me to do? And this year really allowed me to reset. It allowed me to move on from the heaviness of the the past years and to reset and move into a different energy space. So this year really allowed me to reconnect at a deeper level with who I am, my why, and to then um, move into a a different energy of new beginnings in all honesty. And even next year, when I go through and do the setting my intention for next year, I can feel the energy is even going to be newer beginnings next year. So that's why I chose recalibration for Um, That's how I would describe this year. Um, And then just go through and reflecting the things that I remember most about the past year. Now, I, my, my mind works in, um, I compartmentalize things. So I am not thinking too deeply about my reflection of the past year as I describe this to you, because I will go through that deeply. My mind isn't allowing me to go too deeply because it knows that there's going to be a special time for that. It's part of the ritual. So um, that may or may not relate to you. But what am I going to remember about the past year? I'll dive into that. Um, I'll I'll dive into that. Um, But for 2022, just reflecting on what I'd written down, it was about overcoming and managing the heavy emotions of grief. That was really what I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember those key events. Um, They were the things. And then it's about reflecting on the things, the great things that I achieved. Because quite often when people are reflecting on their years and if they've had 
heaviness, often they just go, yeah, the whole year was shit. Um, Now, it was easy for me. I felt like that for a while, but I forced myself to go through and say, well, what are the great things that I've achieved? And what are the things that I set out to achieve but didn't quite get there? And then when I go through the next process for the next year, it's like if I didn't get to achieve those things, are they still important for me for the next year? They might not be. I think about what lessons I learned in the the previous year and what I really discovered about myself. So those those levels, um, lessons, life lessons, but what I really discovered about who I am. I think about the things that I'm proud of and things that I let go of, things that I still want to let go of that I didn't quite get to um, to, to release, things that maybe towards the end of the year, they weren't things that I set out to release, but might be like, oh my gosh, it became really evident that I'd like to. Where did I feel wobbly in the year? Where did I feel out of balance? And I also, um, what are the things that I'm grateful for? What am I grateful for for this um, th- this past year? Now I'm not a I I don't have I journal I journal a lot but I don't keep diary entries of how I was feeling at particular points so I don't go back and reflect on oh yeah I remember exactly what I was doing in January for me, it's an overall feeling. But when I move into this energy of reflection, a lot of things actually come to me that the conscious mind had probably packed away. What are some of the frustrations and challenges that I experienced during the year? And what can I do to make sure that they don't happen again? What can I do to make sure that they don't happen? What things really lit me up? What things really broke my heart? And how did my life change? How did my life change? So I spend, and there's other prompts there as well. It's about, you can get an essence from some of those ones that I've talked about is it's looking at the year and it's not just saying, oh yeah, last year was great or last year was crap. It's taking the elements of what was great about the year or what was good or what was kind of okay, what wasn't great or good or okay, and taking the layer even deeper and the reflecting. And I can see um, even just going back through last year, my reflections on last year, I was able to take them and and do some stuff with them, but a lot of it was letting go of the grief and the heaviness. And that's what were my intentions for this year, 2023. So when I'm reflecting on 2023, a lot of it will be reflecting on, you know, did I, was I able to let go of the grief? And there's been some parts that have been fucking hard, like so hard, but I can... I've done a lot of work around that and I've set those intentions. I didn't set a a goal saying, you know, by the 31st of December, 2023, I will have released all of, you know, the grief that I've been carrying. I wish it was that easy, (laughs) but setting the intention that I will be able to um, move through the grief and release the grief and, to move into a different energy by setting that intention. um, It just is a guiding light for me to be able to say, well, what is it that's that next layer of who I am? And that's why the, the playbook is about new year, fabulous next level you. We're, We're always evolving. And a lot of people say, you know, don't, don't tell me I need to be different because I'm great exactly as I am. Absolutely believe that. But it's about evolution. If we stayed the same, um, we stay the same. And there'll be some elements that we actually, we absolutely want to capture that. There'll be other elements of what is that next version of me. Um, So that's it. Nice short little one about bringing the year to a close 
Um, And then when I share the next episode, it will be about the process of setting your intentions and what you want the new year to be and that fabulous next level you. And I, as I mentioned, this process for me is a, is a December, January process. It's about bringing, you know, my year to an end. But when I've talked to a lot of people, they go, it doesn't feel like my year comes to an end until, you know, maybe January, February, March. And then my new year starts um, at a different kind of cadence than mine. You can use this playbook however you want to use it and at whatever time you feel it's about bringing the year or you know whatever it is that you want to bring to a a close you can do that whenever you want it's it's not i used to do the playbooks based on you know the the end of a calendar year but i found a lot of people that didn't work for them so it's generic that you can use it however you want to use it the if you do want to purchase it super cheap 27 Aussie dollars and the link will be in the show notes. Um, And one of the things I was thinking as I sit here, like it's super hot um, today in Australia and I'm just going to um, do a um, temperature conversion. Sorry, I was just, um, so it's going to be... 34 degrees um, Celsius, which is 93 um, for those um, in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's, this is my favourite, perfect, beautiful temperature. Um, And I've got, for those of you that are are watching, I've got a little elephant here where I've got a scented candle burning and the candle is coconut and mango. So it smells like summer in here. And I think one of the things I'm going to explore, and it may or may not be part of my new year, um, end of year, uh, I'm just, it will come to me, but who I've been in previous lifetimes because, and where I have, and I know there's people that, that work with this space. Um, I reckon Mediterranean, um, coastal beach, something is part of my ancestry previous lives. Cause when I smell coconut and mango, um, now I know that that's the tropical, tropical, um, I feel like I'm at home. So I'm going to explore what that actually means. So anybody who's got clues, um, let me know. Let me know. Anyway, hugs, happiness, um, download the bits, the happiness checker. Um, You can purchase the New Year Fabulous Next Level You. And also like reach out, follow me on socials, the Happiness Hive, um, Facebook or Instagram. Follow me on socials and um, DM me if you want any extra bits of information. Love to hugs and happiness, and um, here's to a fabulous year that's been and a fabulous year ahead. Love you. Bye.